Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick and welcome to the Lightroom Blog channel. It's Tuesday, so it's Lightroom Tuesday and we're going to cover how to edit a landscape in Lightroom. Hey folks, we're not going to be jumping through hoops and you know showing particular tools. Today is just about using the tools that are there to get the best from a landscape. So here's a shot that I did in Ackle and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the interface. So I'm going to go shift tab to get rid of all of the panels. It helps if I'm actually on Lightroom last screen flow. So shift tab. I'm going to press I to cycle through the information so we hide it. So we can see that we've got a pretty flat look here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the right panel here and press D for develop to get that. Just hide the, this panel here, don't need it. Uh, go away panel. And I'm going to start off here and um, by making sure the process version is on the newest version of it, just in case I want to use the range mask. So the first thing I see is that my horizon may not be completely straight, so I'm going to fix that first. So I click on the crop tool, you can press or for that as well, and I am going to click on auto and have it work it out itself. Oh, can I straighten it? So I'm just going to go in and manually do it. So if I hold down the command or control key, it turns into the angle. I'm just going to drag along here and just drag it down slightly. So we can, as you can see, it's only a tiny little angle. Okay, and press enter to apply that. So I'm looking at the histogram and I can see that we could probably afford to bring the exposure up a bit in total. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do my typical, which is that I will pull the highlights the whole way down and bring my shadows the whole way up for kind of a HDR kind of effect. Normally when you bring the shadows the whole way up, it kind of pulls the blacks too much. You have to pull the blacks down afterwards. I'm going to pull down the blacks so that we still have our contrast in there. And the next thing I'm going to do is jump to effects very quickly and bring up dehaze. Now dehaze will bring in contrast and it will bring in color change and saturation. It's supposed to be for getting rid of haze, but it does beautiful things to landscapes. So I tend to use it or abuse it maybe. Now what it does do though is it tends to drop the overall level of the shot so I will drag the exposure up here in the histogram. Okay so that's cool so now my bright parts of the image here are this beach so I don't really want to make that beach too bright so I'm going to leave that as that. Now the next thing I'm going to do before I make any color changes I'm going to go to camera calibration and I'm going to select camera velvia vivid. Now you may have a vivid mode for your camera and so it could be called camera landscape or it could be called vivid or something like that. So I'm going to apply that and boom, look at the difference there. Huge, right? So I can already see that I don't really need to add any more color just by having changed that. So perfect. Really, really like that. Um, what else can I do here? Because I actually am pretty happy with how this looks. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and press the spot removal button, which is Q. And uh, down here we have this visualize spots option. I may or may not have spots in this image. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But by changing that and moving this slider around. So I can see, you no, know, I appear to be pretty spotless now, which is pretty good. Doesn't always happen. Um, <clears throat> so what I will do is I will get rid of this bird, for example, just to show you spot removal in action here. So I just click that. It will copy from somewhere else. And it's gone, but if I press H, I can see where it's come from. So I say, let's say I want to move it, I can just move it to here. H to hide it again. And there's a kind of a wave there that needs to line up. So I'm just going to line up that wave. Yep, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. So what else can we do with this? Well, there's nothing to stop us making tonal changes that have nothing to do with how a normal landscape would work. So I could start coming in here and create, in effects, I could create a vignette. So by doing that, it allows me to darken down the edges so that the attention is drawn here. So that we're keeping up inside of this circle here. So we have this curve basically around here and our eyes stay within the curve. So what I have is I have this little building here. I want that to be a little bit of a highlight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the radial tool here for a second. And just pull it in around that. And I'm going to click invert. So that way I want it to affect just what's inside there. And I'm going to have it turn off the saturation for a second and I'm just going to brighten that up a little bit there and so our eye should go to that one so I press H to hide that as well and that's maybe a little bit too much it's a little bit too obvious that it's highlighted but I'll have it there so that we can see it other things that we could potentially do here is have a look at the crop itself and say to ourselves 
Well, where are we with the thirds? Okay, well, we can see that the third is not quite in the right place. So if we bring this up a little bit here, we can also hide these thistle heads, which I think are distracting on the edge of the frame. And then by bringing this over here a little bit, we can start to get our building more towards that third. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I also might look and think of the option of doing this is if I was cropping for Instagram, I would need to crop maybe slightly narrower. Now, the beach here is probably a little bit uh, too dark or too light, rather. I'm just going to click new, create a new radial tool. Just bring it along the beach there and press H so I can see where it is exactly. And I'm going to place it and twist it. Now, because we didn't change the settings before we used it, it has the settings from before we used it the last time. So you can see it has this increased exposure on the outside. So I'm going to click invert that. And now I'm going to bring this down. So I'm going to darken the beach. What I can do is also pull down the highlights. And the highlights pulling that down should help pull them down on the beach. Again, we can turn them on and off just to see what they do. Yes, that is having a darkening effect. I think I'm just going to pull a little bit more on the exposure on that. Yep, so I'm happy with that. Now, if we want to do stuff in here, we can also go to the brush tool. And let's say we want to do a little bit of dodging and burning. Okay. So in this case here, I'm going to apply maybe 0.2. There we go. Of, of a stop. And I can come in here with a soft edge brush. I want it to be really feathered. It doesn't stop me coming in here and say just even add a little bit of light in there so that it's not completely gone. Now, this area here is slightly hazy, so what I might also do to this is add a little bit of dehaze. Maybe with a clarity as well. So we're just going to bring that out. And now that I've added dehaze, I probably need a small bit more exposure. So there we go. That's just lifting that a little bit because I feel it's just a little bit too much shadow. So now what we can do from there is we can make decisions about changing color. So we could have color tone changes if we like. So from there, we could go into the tone curve. And let's say if you wanted to go for a vintagey look, we could just add a little kind of a matte finish like this to give it a kind of a vintage feel. Or if we wanted to go in to the individual color channels, we could add some tone. So, so I could boost the reds and the highlights. And I could come to blues and say I could also boost the yellows by pulling down the blue and increase these blues. That's if you wanted to kind of add a little bit, a bit of a color tone to it, which some people do. Now, in this case, I'm not going to, so I'm just going to go back to linear for a second here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually happy enough that this image is pretty much done. I do like it. So what I'm going to do is let's do a before and after. So we hit the backslash key. And that's our before. And that's our after. So we can see that we've done a significant amount of stuff just by using a few tools inside Lightroom. Hey, folks, I hope you found that useful and you picked up one or two tips for editing your landscape photos. Oh, what's going on with my voice there? Folks, we do do stuff on Tuesdays about Lightroom and on Fridays we generally do photo stuff. So please do subscribe if you haven't already. I know I get quite a few views and yeah, you know, some of them are subscribers, but mostly they're not subscribed. So please do consider subscribing. If you're subscribed and you're missing videos, please do hit the notification bell. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and please share it with your friends. Thanks a million for taking time to watch this video and I will see you in the next one.